dear. It's a lovely morning. Is it? Oh, yes. It's lovely. Are you happy then? Yes. Very happy. Uh -huh. Now you have to stay in bed and Laurent and I will bring you your breakfast. No, don't bother. I'll get up. No, you won't. We want this to be a treat for you too. We're happy and we want everyone to be happy. Very well. If you insist. We do. <laughs> oh, what is it, Therese? May Laurent come in for a moment? He's got... Yes, of course. Something to give you from our room. Yes, of course. Take it in there now. Go on, you're not afraid of it in the daylight, are you? I'm not afraid of it. You behave as if you were last night. Last night? So did you. Only when he was there in the bed. We were children. We imagined things. Yes. We'll be glad to get rid of it. Then we'll be all right. Laurent. What? Smile. You had a happy night. Did I? You had me for the first time. Oh, yes. So I did. Come in, Laurent. Good morning, Mother. Good morning, Laurent. It's a lovely morning. <laughs> and I brought you the portrait. I believe you're going to have it in here. Oh, yes. My poor Camille. Oh, you mustn't cry, Mother, when it's such a lovely day. Now. There's a hook. Shall I hang it for you? Yes, please. Oh. He was a splendid fellow. But you're going to have a new son now. A Therese has got a new husband. And we're going to be happy, aren't we? As happy as sandboys, aren't we? Of course we are. Of course we are. <laughs> Aren't you going to get undressed? We're going to bed then. Why not? waiting for you. Don't wait for me. I'd rather. No. I won't. I'll tell you why you won't get undressed. Tell me then. At least why you won't get into the bed. Why? Because Camille will be there with us, between us, in the bed. You can't be there. I gave the portrait to her. She's got it in her room. Look at the bed. Camille can't be there. It's not possible. We drowned him. We saw him drown. I saw his body dead on the slab in the morgue. He's dead. He can't come back. And when a young married couple, both of them, have dark rings round their eyes, it's a sign. A sign of what? <laughs> <laughs> what would you say it was a sign of grief, well, eh? I'd say it foretold a happy event in roughly nine months' time. Ah! <laughs> you think that, do you? <laughs> well, I dare say you're right. Or, or at least it's a sign that they're going the right way about mm. it. <laughs> <laughs> That's enough of the silly childishness. Take your clothes. No! Are you afraid of Camille? He's dead, I tell you. No! Get your clothes off, then. You're my wife, aren't you? You have to take your clothes off when I tell no! you. No! Stop imagining things. Camille's in his grave. Get away! Or do I have to kill him all over again? Stop, Laurent. You take my clothes. Leave me alone. I'm your husband, not Camille. Not that weak little... Not no, that please don't, Laurent. Listen to this. Don't. <laughs> 
When we're dead, when we're dead, it won't make the slightest difference to us, one way or another, that we killed that good for nothing, that we threw him in the grave because he couldn't. No! No! Just like the first time, remember? Therese, we're going to get rid of him forever, whether you like it or not. Dear. Are you ready to go downstairs, then? Yes, I've finished my coffee. Let me give you a hand, then. I, I don't know if I'll be able to manage the stairs. This wretched paralysis gets worse every day. I can stand all right and walk a bit on the level. But the stairs... No, I can't even walk on the level now. Oh, I'm sorry to be such a tiresome old woman, but I'm afraid I can't. I really can't. Nonsense. You're not tiresome at all. We'll just have to buy you a wheelchair and push you from oh. room to room. <laughs> and I'll carry you down no, the stairs. No, I'll be too heavy. No, I'll, I'll carry you now. No. There. No. Oh, no. Light as a feather. Oh, no. <laughs> Put me down the wrong Come on, let's show to. Therese. Oh, dear. Mother, what is he doing to you? Just showing her how easy it is to carry her. He's so strong. And she's so light. No trouble at all. Oh, but put me down Here now. Me Whatever you say. But we will get you a wheelchair, if only to move you from your room to here. There. I am too heavy for you. Oh, not a bit of it. And I'll carry you down the stairs just to prove it. But only if that's what you really want. If you really want to go down to the shop, or would you rather stay here? No, I'll go down to the shop. I'd like to be useful to you while I can. <laughs> Up with you, then, and hold tight. Here we go. Ooh. Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> ah, Therese, darling, would you draw the curtain for us? Yes, of course, darling. Bye-bye. <laughs> <laughs> ah, now's my chance to stumble and trip, and you go flying over the banisters. You wouldn't, would you? I might. Oh, you'd never do a thing like that. No, you're much too dear to us. Yeah. And we'd be lost without you. And oh. there you are. Oh, thank you, Lord. Now, are you all right there? Is there anything you want? No, thank Nothing you. Nothing I can get you? No, thank you. You and Therese are really much too kind. Nonsense. You're our mother, aren't you? You're all I've got. Well, even then, you're all we've got. Oh, dear, Lord. Are we? Excuse me a minute. Of course. I must go up again. I didn't say goodbye to Therese. Oh, dear. <laughs> Well, she's getting to be a nuisance. Just like he did. I don't mean that. But carrying her to and fro. Well, we've got nothing to gain by her death. She's given us her money already. She's given you her money. We show advised it should be under my control. She always takes Miss Show's advice. Silly old fool. And it was under your control? You wouldn't see me for dust. How much would you take? To run away. It isn't a question of that. Well, you better put up with the old woman then. If it's just the two of us, we need her. Or there'll just be us and him. Goodbye. Back at the usual time, I hope. Ready for bed. You bitch.
How is she? The paralysis is gaining on her. It has been for some time. A month ago, she could go up and down the stairs slowly, but she could do it by herself. I'm afraid once the process has begun, there's no reversing it. You mean? It leads sooner or later, perhaps suddenly, perhaps not, but in any case, inevitably, to complete paralysis of all the members. Arms and legs and everything. A living death, in fact. Oh, I wouldn't say that. She'll still be able to eat and drink, see and hear, and talk. Oh, oh, so long as she can talk. Oh, that's important, do you think? Well, without that, there'd be no one to talk to, except my wife. Yes. And no one to talk to me, except... My husband is fond of company. Well, I hope Madame Rakan will be able to talk to you for quite a bit of time yet. Why did you have to be so rude to me? Was I? When? Telling the doctor you didn't like talking to me. I didn't say that. As good as. I simply said I was glad she'll be able to talk. And I am. It's company. I like company. You said so yourself. And I don't get much from you. Oh, in the bedroom? There's plenty of company in there. There's three of us. Shut up. There's you and me and... Shut up, I tell you. Isn't that enough for you? At least keep your voice down. She's oh, in the next let room. Let her listen. She'll learn something. Go on, hit me. That's about all you can. I hear that Madame Rakan's paralysis is not getting any better. Is that so? It's lucky she's got you two young ones to look she after. She is a fortunate woman. She deserves her fortune. You two are saints. No, they are angels. Guardian angels. And here oh, she is. Yes. Ah! In her new chariot. Isn't it magnificent? Yeah, madame. I'm afraid I can't raise my hand. You'll have to do it all yourself. Dear madame, I trust this is only a temporary setback. We shall soon see you restored to full health. Oh, well, until that happens, I go about in a wheelchair and you have to lift my hand. A pleasure, dear madame. Oh, dear, Felipe. <laughs> Are Suzanne and Olivier come. Uh, in, in a moment. They have a good excuse for being late. Suzanne is expecting. Oh. <laughs> I'll make the tea, then. <laughs> so, they've beaten us to it, eh? Oh, I didn't think they would. <laughs> Nor did I. <laughs> Since you have dilly me. <laughs> so, Laurent, how do things go with you? Hmm? Fine. Uh, did you know I was giving up my job? No, uh, y your job? The office? Yeah. It was boring. Well, boring? But you were getting a good salary. And I wanted more time to help look after Mother. Ah, for that, <laughs> yes, of course. Laurent is good to me. Yeah. <laughs> um, <clears throat> would you... Uh, would you do nothing else? I thought I might take up painting again. Painting? And get myself a small studio. Oh, yes, of course. You did that portrait of a, of a friend of ours, didn't you? Yes. Um, um. At least it'll keep me out of mischief. Rich and famous now, you know. The waiter. Oh, red wine. Oh, I heard something about you. What was it? Oh, yes. You got married. Yes. But well, isn't it working? I'm not enjoying myself. Well, you don't surprise me. I'd never have called you the marrying type. It's not that girl you were crazy about a couple of years ago. Is it you were going to bed with her? Oh, no, no. Not that one. <laughs> she got money? 
Enough to let me leave my job. Well, that's something. But I can't stand staying in the house either. <laughs> that's worse of all. Well, what do you do with yourself? I've got myself a small studio. I'm trying to be a painter. You never thought much of my paintings in the old days, did you? I thought they were beginner's work. Would you come and have a look at them now? And tell me if I'm getting any better. Of course. After I've had a couple of drinks. better than I would have believed. Really? You've made great strides. You have strength, delicacy and feeling. Oh, you really have talent. Why do you always use the same model? What? Oh, it's different, but it's always the same person. Can you only afford one, or is it a friend? I don't have a model. Just your imagination, is it an obsession with that face? Well, you certainly paint him to the light. My studio. She's had trouble with her tongue. What? I, uh, uh, it happened about an hour ago, quite sudden. I went for the doctor. He promised to come. I don't know what can be keeping it. How are you, Mother? She can't answer you. It's all right. Oh, there, there. Never mind. Wipe her eyes. She's crying. She won't be company for you any longer. Oh, she can still hear, can't she? Can she? The doctor didn't say anything about her going deaf, too. Mother? Can you hear us? If you can, make a little sound. Ooh. And show us with your eyes. Ooh. Yes. And hear us. And understand us. Then we shall have to watch what we say, shan't we? Yes, we shall. It wouldn't do to use bad language in front of Mother. It might shock her, and that would never do. Mother, 
try not to split. Like some more. <laughs> I can't tell whether you're saying yes or no, so I shall just have to guess. There we go. Uh, I, I can understand everything. Oh, yes. Everything perfectly. I can read it in her eyes. Mm -hmm. We can talk to each other as well as ever, dear madame, can't we? As well as ever. Mm -hmm. You with your voice and... Uh, uh, me, me, me with my voice and you with your eyes, eh? <laughs> They're as good as a voice any time. I can understand everything you want. <laughs> What's she saying now, then? Uh, she's, uh, she's saying she'd like another cushion at her back. <laughs> Are you sure? And uh, she, she's sorry she can't play dominoes, but she'd like to see us have a game, yes. Yeah, and she wouldn't mind a cup of tea uh, and a cake. Can't you read her eyes? I find it absolutely easy. Never mind these others, dear madame. <laughs> we'll have a cosy little chat, won't we? Eh? <laughs> Do you think she likes having the light on her so brightly? She doesn't mind. How do you know? I know. You like Grieve? You can tell what she thinks just by looking at her. No, I'm not like Grieve, but I can tell. Everything perfectly? Not perfectly. Not well enough. Grieve's a fool. I'm not. Perhaps not. I'm here alone with her all day. I have to understand her. Not like you. What does that mean? They're out all day at cafes and bars. At my studio. Are you? Yes. Don't let's argue in front of her. Why not? She can't tell anybody. In case. In case what? Do you think Grieve is going to understand her? No, but... Uh... I think I'll have a turn going to your studio, let you stay here with her all day. What would you do there? You can't paint. No, but at least I'd find out what you do there all day. Paint. With your red-haired models. There aren't any. Aren't there? I don't use any. Oh, I thought that was the whole thing about being a painter, to have red-haired models. I don't have any models, red-haired or not. I suppose you paint it all out of your imagination. Yes, I do. Oh, I'd like to see what you imagine. I think I'll go along there myself and have a look. No. Why not? You can't. Why can't I? You just can't. I've, uh... You've what? I've destroyed all my paintings, thrown them all away. Why? They weren't good enough. Oh, good enough for what? A friend of mine, Vidal, he, he's a famous painter. He came and looked at them and he said... He uh, said they weren't good enough, no, did no, he? No, no, he said they were talented, really talented, but I would do better if I went on... When was this? A week or two ago. All right, then you can show me what you've done since. I haven't done any since. Nothing at all? No. Well, what happened to your imagination? I only ever imagined one thing, painted one thing. And what was that? Red head models? No. What then? It was, uh, I, I can't tell you. I think you just go drinking in bars with your artist friend. You never paint anything at no, all. No, I do. Where do you get the money from? I suppose you sponge it off there. No, I paint. Paint what? I don't believe you. Paint the one thing in my imagination. And what is that one thing? I can't tell you. Yet. You can't tell me because there isn't any one thing. No, it's not that. It's... You're trying to tell me it's... Yes, that's right. You mean you see him in your mind as well as in your bed? Yes, I do. That feeble husband of mine. Don't say his name. It makes a cry. Camille! You can see him all the time. You and can't! I tell you, He's I see dead him. and in his grave! I see him. And you're as feeble as he was. I don't know why I you're... I see him all him. the time! As he was when I picked him up and threw him overboard. As he was when he fell to the river and drowned, as he was when I saw him dead on a slab in the moor. All right, you killed him. What for? <laughs> to get my body every night. Well, you've got it, and what do you do with it? She had. She knows. Well, what are you going to do about it? 
You gonna tell people? How? You better put it to bed. Good night, Mother. Sleep well. Look at me all you want to. Your eyes won't kill me. And uh, I beg to open the proceedings with a double five. There. <laughs> How's that for a start, madame? I saw a little smile in your eyes as I played it. Aha, you were thinking they'll find it hard to keep up with old Grieve tonight. <laughs> and I have to take one already. Mm. Not a five to be seen. And I haven't picked one either. Was ever a man so unlucky? Lucky in dominoes, unlucky in love. Is that really so? <laughs> well, uh, Grieve's never married. Mm. But that might mean he's lucky, not unlucky. <laughs> <laughs> Whereas you're obviously lucky in having the charming Therese. Oh. What do you say, madame? That Laurent and Therese are both lucky in having each other? That's right, I quite agree. They're a model couple. And the way they look after you is unique. Quite unique. I think it's really marvellous. Everybody says so. Oh, it's only what anyone would have done in our place for a mother who's so dearly loved. There's no credit attached to it, absolutely none at all. Oh, yes. Oh, you think you've made things difficult for me, do you? <laughs> yes, well, to be frank, you have. I shall have to pick with incredible skill. And, uh, uh there you are. I have a double six. <laughs> oh, why? Look at Madame. Uh, well, uh, oh, uh, she's uh, moving her fingers. Uh, uh, she wants something. What? Uh, she wants to play dominoes. No, that's not it. What, 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 what was she trying to tell us? She's trying to write something. Give her a pencil. She wouldn't be able to hold it. Let, 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 let her trace what she wants to write. We'll read it. She's saying I'm very clever to have picked a double six. Don't play the fool. I'm not. Let, let, let her say what she wants to. Go on, dear madame. T. D. E. Oh, no, be, be quiet, Grieve. Mm. I've got it. Therese. She's written your name, Therese. Oh, why? Why on earth should she write Therese? Therese and... And what? Go on, dear madame. Please go, go on. Let's, let's have the rest of it. Therese and Laurent. Yes, that's quite clear. She's written your two names. What's next? Therese and Laurent what? K what? What does K stand for? K. Th then an I, perhaps? K. K, I. Kai, Ki. Have you any idea what it could mean? No, none. No, oh, it's quite clear to me. Well, kind? Kindness? Kiss? No, 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 no. I, I, I don't need letters on the table. I can read the whole phrase in the eyes of madame. She wants to say, uh, uh, Therese and Laurent, kindest of children. Well, she wanted to pay a tribute to them. That much is quite yeah. certain. <laughs> we understood it, dear madame. Uh, and we share your regard and affection for Therese and Laurent. Really, we do. Rest assured of that. Uh, uh, shall, shall we get on with the game, then? Yes, where were we? Oh, you, uh, you were just going to play the double six. Yeah, that's right. And I now play it. There. <laughs> and this time I can follow. Thank heavens. There won't be a moment. Would you like to bring her in? Good news. You may as well all hear it at the same time. I 
Madame Raquin. I have been your doctor for some years now. I know you for a sensible woman. You wouldn't want me to keep anything a secret from you. Well, I've been told what you did yesterday, writing on the table and moving your fingers. I was astounded. Fortunately, it was your daughter who told me, or I would not have believed it. I can only think you made a really tremendous effort of will to do this, to express your recognition and gratitude for the loving care that Therese and Laurent have shown you. I think you've shown enormous courage. But I must tell you that however great your courage, the paralysis has taken hold and you'll never be able to do anything like that again. That is the bad news I have to tell you. Bell of Laurent, I did whatever he wanted me to. Oh, forgive me. Have pity on me. Please, forgive me. I did it because Laurent told me to. Please forgive me. Please. Hello. What are you up to down on the floor like that? Begging forgiveness yeah. or what? Well, get up from there. You're getting your dress dirty. Not until she forgives me. Oh, what the hell does it matter whether she does or not? It won't bring Camille back to life, will it? It won't undo the past. There's the man who did it, Mother. He killed Camille. I saw him. Stop that, do you hear me? He threw him in the river. Stop that! No! Did you tell her how you begged me to kill him? No. When Camille was alive. And you came to my room to stretch yourself out of my bed, eh? And you said you wanted me to be happy, and you said I would be happy if only Camille were dead. That's not true. No, don't! What's not true? Mm. You came to my bed, as I came to yours, in there, dozens of times. Mm. And we used to make love while you were downstairs minding the shop. Even when you came into the room once, I was hiding under a pile of clothes. And as soon as you'd gone, we committed adultery again. Did you tell her that? No. I don't know why you left out the best part of the story. You were extraordinary in bed. 
You drove me wild with your lovemaking, and you persuaded me to kill Camille. No, that's not true. You remember the river? When Camille got into the boat, and I whispered to you, I'm going to drown him, just do what I say. And you could have stopped the whole thing, you could have screamed, you could have told Camille, but you didn't. You just stood there, you just got into the boat. It's true that I got in. But I didn't really hear what he said. I didn't know he was going to kill Camille until he did it. That's what I asked you to forgive me for, for not helping him then. <laughs> oh, go on. Hit me. Kill me like you killed Camille. What's the good of telling you all this? It's pointless, isn't it? You can't do anything about it. I know it can only distress you hearing it, and you're, you're distressed enough already. God knows. But since you've heard most of it, you better have the rest so as you don't get distressed for the wrong reasons. The first thing you've got to realize is this woman is the most lecherous, the most lustful woman on earth. Right from the first. She raped me. Oh, I never met a woman so ready to be raped. No. And if I told you the tricks she got up to in bed, a real whore's tricks, oh. I don't know where she knew them from. She must have got them by instinct. Yes. She's a whore at heart, a natural whore, born to suck the marrow of men's bones. If I'm a whore, what are you, a fancy man? Not any longer. You enjoyed that, didn't you? So did I. love me, don't you, Francois? Mm. The only one who does. Oh, you're a good friend to me, Francois. You are. You're a very good friend to me. I thought I told you I don't like that cat in here at night. Throw him out. And it's too hot in here. This place is like a furnace. How do you think we're ever going to sleep? Do we ever sleep? Oh, we might. If you didn't keep stoking up that fire. What do you need a fire for in this weather? Look in it. You see what? Faces. What faces? I thought I told you to get that cat out of here. I like him. Well, I don't. Francois. He stares at me like the old woman. Every witch has a cat, hasn't she? What's the word? That cat's a familiar. With the same thought in both their minds, they want to go to the police and tell them what they know. Well, that's one thing the cat won't do. What are you going to do? Ah! Scratch me, would you? That'll teach you to stare at me. You killed him! Not quite, apparently. But at least I've thrown him out of here and he won't get back in. You, damp that fire down, unless you want the same thing to happen to you. Good morning, Mother. How are you this morning? Don't bother to answer. We don't want to hear that, do we? In case you're wondering what that was, that was Francois. Laurent got angry with him last night, and he's thrown him out the window... And I think he's broken his back. He's taking an awfully long time to die. Well, well, what's a cat compared to a son, eh? I'll get you your coffee. How is she? Alive, just like Francois. Neither of them can last much longer. I'm glad to say. No. Oh, oh my. late. Is supper ready? Not yet. Then what do you mean I'm late? I come home for supper, don't I? What are you doing? Packing these things up. What for? Can't you sell them? 
I'm closing the shop. Why? Because it's too much for me as well as looking after her, and I get precious little help from you. How are we going to live? On her money? Why not? She gave it to me. 40,000 francs. More than 40? It's enough. If we're careful. You know, some of this stuff isn't bad. Too bright for you. I don't know. Well, I'm off. You can bring the old woman in first. Bring her in yourself. If you do nothing all day long, you said so yourself, you can do that. You're off to your studio. Yes. Oh, I want some money. How much? A thousand francs. What? For lunches and so on. A thousand francs? You know she meant that money for both of us. She never said that, and she can't say it now. Look, I've got a right... A to... right? You've got a right? You haven't got a right to be alive. What do you mean by that? I mean, the old woman can't talk, but I can. I can go straight down those stairs to the police station and tell them how you murdered Camille. All right, go to the police. I'll come with you. All right, then go on. You tell your story, I'll tell mine. You wouldn't. Oh, wouldn't I? I think you'll enjoy it. home early. Yes. I came home to get some money from you. Still want that thousand francs? No. Nope. Five thousand. What? You've left your job. We've closed the shop. We're living on capital and you want five thousand of it? Yes. What would you do with it? Drink it? Drink it and have women. makes you think you can. 
I followed you today because I thought you might be going to the police. But you've got another way of passing the time. But for me, I've had enough. I'm at the end of my tether. If you don't want to give me money to get blind drunk, then I'll go to the police myself and they can send us both to the scaffold. You think you can frighten me with that? I'm as tired of life as you are. I am sick of it. And I can't find any way to make it bearable. If you don't go to the police, I will. I'll go now. Come on. Come on, you coming? Anyway, we can't go to the police station today. Oh? Why? It's Thursday. Michaud and Grieve are coming. I saw who is. Everything. As always. What I always say is this is a happy home. Good people live here. That's why one feels so much at ease here. Yes, this is the temple of peace. Now, usually I go to bed at nine o'clock. Here it's half past eleven and I'm not sleepy. Because good people live here. Decent people. <laughs> good night, dear madame. Good night, Therese. Good night. And thank you. Good night, dear madame. Good night, Therese. Good night, monsieur. I'll see you down. Thank you. Good night, madame. Good night, Therese. Good night, Suzanne. I'll be round in the morning at nine. No, no, don't. Don't come until the afternoon. I may go out in the morning. Good night. Good night, madame. Good night, Therese. Good till night. next week, I hope. Good night. Are we going to bed, then? Yes, of course. It's very late. I'll just get my water. I know. I'll get it for you.
I spend some of your money. 